the round of applause. Amen. All right. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
three-year-old unwraps her candy, puts it in her mouth, and goes, and spits out the candy. My dad was like, see, to hold you. Sometimes we're like that. We think we know what's best. We think we can do it ourselves. Do you know why the six-year-old trusted the father? Because she had more time that she spent with the father. Amen. 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 She spent six years with the father knowing that the father knows what's best for the child. Amen. Sometimes we're like the three-year-old. And you know why? Because we haven't spent enough time in the presence of God, knowing that our God, the Father, who made the heavens and earth, know what's best for you and me. Amen. We have to get to this point. And when we're not at this point, it's what happens here in Numbers chapter 11. Now the people complained. They started complaining. How many of us complain sometimes? Oh, my work isn't going so good. Oh, my children are crazy. Like, what's... Oh, my parents are so mean. We start to complain. We, we complain that our brothers and sisters are, are fighting with us to our parents. We complain about issues in our life. We complain to God about our finances. We complain to God about our relationships. We complain to God about our situations. We start to complain. We complain to God about our churches. God, why is my church this way? On hearing this, what does the Lord do? He's offended by it. He is. Amen. Hmm. Let's keep reading. When the people cried out to Moses, <laughs> sometimes we do this, right? Moses is who? Uh, their deliverer at that time, right? Moses is a shadow of Jesus. He is the, the precursor of Jesus. He's the shadow. He's the, the imperfect savior, you could say. And they cry out to Moses. Sometimes our pastors are like our Moseses, right? We take our problems to our pastors. We start to cry out to our pastors and we start to tell them our problems and our complaints. But the problem is we haven't even taken it to God first. What kind of relationship do we have with God when we're going through our pastors? Here's the thing. God says, Jesus says, be connected to the vine. Be connected to him. Be connected to the source. It doesn't say have your relationship with God through your pastor. Have your relationship with God directly with God the Father. Then you'll know what is best, what God wants for you. Because the fire, this place was called Tabera, because a fire from the Lord had burned among them. You know, uh, when, okay, so let's keep reading. The rabble with them began to crave other food. Rabble, we'll get to that in just a second, okay? Just keep that word in your mind. The rabble, or in some translations it says, the mixed multitude. <coughs> began to crave other food. You know, when our church churches start growing, what happens? Problem increases. <laughs> Problems increase. Difficulties increase. Complaints start to increase. We have a we have a box uh, at our church. It's called the suggestion and, and complaints box. You know, suggestion box. And if you have any suggestions, you put it in there, right? Uh, by God's grace, no one has put any suggestions in there yet. But I'm sure as the church begins to grow, there will be suggestions. Maybe no one will write it down and put it in the box. But it will come to the pastor. Pastor, I have a suggestion for you. Why don't you do it this way? Pastor, I have a suggestion for you. Why don't we do things this way? It is not our suggestions. We should follow God's suggestions. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are not to follow our desires. Deny yourself. Deny your desires. Deny yourself and follow what the Father wants. Because when you spend more time with the Father, 
When you spend more time with the Father, the Father's desires become your desires. Amen. Amen. The Father's desires become your desires. Amen. Here's the problem. The rabble, the mixed multitude. You know, when, when the Israelites uh, left Egypt, it says there was about 600,000, what? Men, right? Yeah. 600,000 men that left with them. They were How long were they in Egypt? I think 430 years they were in Egypt under uh, the, the, the rule of, of the Egyptians, right? Yes. And they were in bondage. They were suffering. They were in pain. They were being beaten. They were being tortured. And so they cried out to God, God, deliver us. Send us a deliverer. Send us a deliverer. God finally answered their prayers and sent a deliverer for them. As they were delivered, see, 430 years is a long time. Oh, man. Uh, if you spend 430 years in America, what happens is we begin to intermingle with uh, other races and other cultures and other, other people around us. It's, it's normal. It's true. It happens. I have cousins that have married, you know, uh, uh, you know, Caucasian people, but cousins that have married black people. I mean, you name it, it's, it's going to happen. Here's what happened here. And, and there was an intermingling between the cultures, between the people of, of Israel with the Egyptians. And so when they left, there was a group of people now, mostly Israelites, but there were a few Egyptian people as well that left with them with Egyptian hearts. There's nothing wrong with being Egyptian, but their hearts were still Egyptian. Their hearts hadn't changed yet, changed yet. So you'd see the rabble, the mixed multitude, those who were still had the Egyptian heart, started to crave other food. And when the rabble or the mixed multitude started to crave other food, the Israelites, what does it say? The Israelites started what? Wailing. Wailing. Hmm. When people around us, Joby has heard this, this analogy before. Are you a thermostat or a thermometer? You guys know what that means? Yes. Okay, how, are you a thermostat or a thermometer? <laughs> You're a thermostat. Why? Huh? We don't change according to the environment. Ooh, preach it, Pastor. <laughs> preach it. <laughs> because we set the temperature for the place around us. See, a thermometer changes and fluctuates based on the temperature around you. If, if your friend or neighbor or your brother or sister is crying, you start to cry. You start to feel this is a hopeless situation. You start to feel like, I cannot do this by my, I cannot do this. But if you're a thermometer, if your foundation is upon the truth of God, always constant at 72 degrees. <laughs> Whatever you like it in your house. If your temperature is constant, you set the temperature for everybody around you. You are the one who influences the world, the church, the people, the disciples. If you spend time with God, become the thermometer that God wants you to be. Amen. Thermostat that God wants you to be. Become the thermostat that God wants. So when, when the rabble or the mixed multitude began to crave other food, what were they craving? Let's look at that. What were they craving? We remember fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. And the cucumbers, and the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. So they were craving the condiments. And a little bit of fish. It's not even a steak. What were they craving for? To me, this stuff is like, not even the good stuff. You know why? Because they still had the heart of an Egyptian. But now we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. 
We never see anything but this manna. You know what the manna in, in, a, in an Ara a Arabic word, it's man, man. It may have derived from this word, it, it's not proven. But it may have derived from the word man. So it means ma na. What is it? They didn't know what it was. When they first saw it, in, in, uh, uh, when, when it first dropped, the dews dropped, and they first saw it, they thought, what is this? Manna. Right? So they, they named it manna. See, manna and the word of God has a lot of correlation. Watch this. Manna is supernaturally given by God. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is not man man made. Man did not create it. Man did not write these God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit inspired word of God. This is our manna. Amen. 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 It's not invented by man. Amen. The problem is sometimes we try to alter it. We try to change it up. What did they do? What did they do? The people cooked it in pots or made it into loaves, crushed it in mortars and ground it in hand mills. They made all kinds of different types of uppams. I know my mom makes different various types of uppams, right? They did all this stuff into cakes, whatever. See, God has given us something perfect. Keep it perfect. Amen. Don't alter it. Amen. Keep it perfect because that's what God has given you. Amen. Manna is supernatural given. Number two, it had to be eaten. You have to eat it. Don't just look at it. Don't just Open it up on Sunday morning and then uh, Sunday after church you leave it in your car and then next Sunday is when you pull out your Bible. Some of us even leave it here at church. Amen. <laughs> I like that. Eat the food that God has given you. Amen. Amen. It has to be eaten. Amen. It has to be gathered daily. Amen. Ooh, did you know? Did you know Amen. that if they let the manna stay an extra day, it would be rotten? Amen. It wouldn't taste good. It would smell. It would have worms in it. Amen. It has to be gathered and eaten daily. Amen. How many of us are spending time eating this word every single day? How do we know the will of the Father? By spending time eating this food every single day. Amen. We ought to eat the food every single day. One more thing. Actually, two more, three more things. It had to be gathered in the morning. Amen. It had to be gathered. Young people, this is for us. Some of us skip family prayer. Some of us don't show up. Some of us, some of us, I, if you don't have family prayer, you know, we need to bring that back. It's important. Morning or evening, whatever, but spending time in the morning with Jesus is absolutely important. I am telling you right now, that will lead the rest of the the rest of the day under the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It had to be gathered in the morning. Amen. That was the best time to eat the word of God, okay? It was obtained by diligence and work. Whew. Don't think it's easy. Studying the word of God is not easy. If you went to Bible school, you know. If you don't go to Bible school, try to go to Bible school. But better than even going to Bible school is spending time eating this word of God. It's not easy. It is not easy. It is work. It is, if it was easy, 
Some of us would stay awake all the time when reading the Bible. <laughs> Most of us, after reading one chapter, were snoozing. It is our bedtime story. This is not a bedtime. Some of us are sleeping here right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is not a bed. This is the living word of God. Amen. It had to be gathered with diligence. Amen. 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 This, is, this next part is what we, we fail at. Okay? Maybe we are good in the, the, all the other parts that I said. It must be collected by stooping. It must be collected by what? Stooping. stooping. You may look stupid stooping, but it's a sign of humility. Amen. Amen. You must read the word of God with all humility. Humility, God, teach me through your word what you want to teach me, God. Amen. Amen. Transform my heart, Holy Spirit. If the word of God is convicting me, change me, God. Change me, Lord. That is the will that I want, God. Amen, amen, amen. With all humility. Amen. I am not perfect. I am not perfect, God. Transform me into the, the Christ-like being that you want me to be. Amen. Change me. Amen. You must stoop to pick it up. It was dis despised by the rabble or the mixed multitude. Yes. This manna, this bread, this word, this life-giving food. You know manna? You know, if, if you go uh, to the oriental side, which is you know, the Asian side of the world, and, and their major food is rice, uh, sometimes they, they have diseases and issues and problems and swelling of the feet and all kinds of issues because they don't get their nutrients in, all the nutrients that they need. Even, um, sometimes we have issues, right? We, we're, a lot of Indians are vitamin D deficient, right? Because we don't have all the nutrients that we need. You know, this manna had everything, every single vitamin, every single nutrient, everything that the people of Israel needed to survive that, for, that uh, 40 years. Amen. 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 Church. God has given us every single thing we need to survive. From the age of zero to the age of 80 to 100, whatever, however old you're going to be. God has given us everything we need to survive. Amen. Moses, Moses then, you know, this uh, murmuring and complaining is contagious. It is contagious. If you start to complain, oh, the band wasn't good today, your neighbor will start to hear that and they'll start complaining next Sunday. Oh, the message wasn't that good today. I didn't get anything. How many of us get in the car and start complaining? God, remove that from my heart right now, Lord. God, that I would get in the car and say, what a blessed time in your presence, God. Amen. Let it continue, actually. I don't want to leave your presence, God. God, bring your presence is not within these four walls, Lord. It is going with me, God. It is with me 24-7 at work, at school, with my friends, along, everywhere I go. Your presence amen. must amen. be with amen. me, God. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Must amen. be with me. Stodrum, stodrum, stodrum. Murmuring and complaining is contagious. How many more minutes do I have? Sorry. Five. Yeah. Murmuring is contagious. Uh, you ever, your parents, you, you, kids, you ever do something bad, and then your parents go, Nindamola. Ah. <laughs> your mom looks at your dad and says, Nindamola. Nindamola ain't gonna come to It's your child, not my child. Joby does something bad, his mom's, uh, his mom's probably telling him, he learned it from you. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Joby. This is what Moses does here. Moses, what does Moses say? Did I conceive these people? <coughs> Did I give birth to them? 
Why do you tell me to carry them in my arms? As a nurse carries an infant to the land, promised an oath to the, their ancestors. Where can I get meat for all these people? They keep wailing to me, give us meat. <laughs> give us meat. Give us meat. <laughs> they keep wailing this, give us meat. I cannot carry all these people by myself. The burden is too heavy for me. Is this, if this is how you are going to treat me, please go ahead and kill me. If I have found favor in your eyes and do not let my face, uh, do not let me face my own ruin. Let's skip to, um, skip to verse uh, uh, 18. Tell the people, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow. You will eat meat. Be careful. You will eat meat. You, you're going to get what you want. You complain, you're going to get what you want. But watch this. The Lord heard you when you wailed. If only we had meat to eat, we are better off in Egypt. Now the Lord will give you meat and you will eat it. You will not just eat it for one day or two days or five or ten or twenty, but a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils. And you will loathe it because you have rejected the Lord who is among you and have wailed before him saying, why did we ever leave Egypt? <sighs> Guys, trust God the first time. Trust God the first time. 31, now a wind went out from the Lord and, the drove, and drove quail from the sea. It scattered them up to two cubits deep all around the camp, as far as a day's walk in any direction. All that day and night, and all the next day, the people went out and gathered quail. No one gathered less than ten omers. Then they spread them out all around the camp. But while they were eating, while the meat was still between their teeth, before it could consume, the anger of the Lord burnt against the people, and he struck them with a severe plague. Therefore, the place was called Kibroth Hatava. You know why it's called Kibroth Hatava? It means the grave of lust. craving. The grave of craving. Because they were buried, buried people who had craved other food. Listen. Young, old, it doesn't matter. <coughs> if you're influenced by the world, and the world is craving certain things, whether it be money, a nice car, a nice home, a nice education, or, I don't know what it is. The, whatever the world is craving, we crave something different. We ought to crave the presence of God. We ought to crave what God craves. A relationship between Him and His children. Do not fall into this trap of following what the world craves. They're a mixed multitude. They're lukewarm. They, in one foot, like God, and the other foot, like the world. Amen. Sunday mornings, they're mighty and holy, and Monday through Friday, they're sinners beyond sin. Amen. Do not crave Amen. what the world craves. Amen. Crave what the Father has taught us to crave. Amen. Amen. That is the word, that is the manna. Amen. The word of God Amen. leading to a relationship Amen. with the King Amen. of Amen. kings. Amen. Father Amen. of all fathers. Amen. Father, we just give you all the glory and honor for this word, God. We pray, God, that this word transforms our lives, Lord Jesus. If any part of this word convicts us, God, that you would teach us through it, Lord. Help us as we open up your word and feed on it to be humble, God. With all humility to learn your word, Lord Jesus. Use us for your kingdom, God. Use us for your kingdom, God. We want to be instruments in your hand, Lord. To be used by your kingdom, God. 
Jesus, Jesus, be the center of it all. All this I ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Am